Hello everyone, welcome to another Figma prototyping tutorial. This time we're gonna create an animated icon that can be used as a toggle between visible and invisible in your user interfaces. This is the final result, this is what we are creating today and if you'd like to, as usual, download the source file for this project and use it in your own project, make sure to check the link in the description that will take you to my store. And now let's take a look at how we can create this in Figma. So we're gonna start with using the frame tool by pressing F on my keyboard and then clicking once to create a frame that is 100 pixels wide and tall. I'm gonna change this to 60 over here in the frame area, 60 by 60, and name this I icon. Then I'm gonna use the ellipse tool by pressing O on my keyboard and creating an ellipse. And this ellipse is gonna be approximately 40 pixels wide and tall, it's gonna be a circle. Then I'm gonna duplicate it by pressing Option and then clicking and dragging, that's how you duplicate an object. And I'm gonna set the opacity of these two to around 60 set the color to zero or black to kind of now um, focus on the right overlap. And so we're gonna move these around a bit and just see what shape of the eye, which is the intersection between these two, what is it gonna look best? I think it's gonna be about this big and we even could make these circles larger. So let's make them 50 and then go over here to this drop down menu with both of these selected by the way right i have both of these selected and i'm gonna press intersect selection this will create our basic eye shape we want to then disable the fill and enable the stroke i'm gonna use a two pixel stroke and also i'm gonna round the corners over here in this area to about one or two, just very, very subtle, right? Then I'm gonna set the opacity of this to 100. So this is what we have, this is our basic eye shape. Then I'm gonna again use the ellipse tool and clicking again, I'm gonna make this ellipse smaller and it's gonna be black, right? So now you can kind of see the eye um, coming to life. Um, this looks very dis disturbing, I think, with the iris at the bottom part of the eye. I think we definitely should go for it being here. I think this seems more natural and calm. And I also think we should make this eye 40 pixels wide. Enter that. And then we can also make this a bit larger, perhaps like this. I think we could even, you know, increase the width of this stroke to about three and just make this a bit smaller. And then let's just see if we can create the pupils, if, if it will look natural. So I'm duplicating this ellipse and then setting this one to white. And yeah, I think, um, I think this, this works, right? So I think the pupil should be around this big. So that's eight by eight within a circle that's 16 by 16. I think this seems the most natural. Then I'm gonna select this ellipse as well as the black one and then go over here to subtract selection. This will make a hole essentially uh, inside the background ellipse. And now we are ready for grouping this. I'm gonna group this, select this whole thing and press Command G. I'm gonna name this eye. We have our eye icon. Now we need to create a mask for our eye. So this will be the shape that will determine which parts of this icon are gonna be visible and which ones, which ones are gonna be hidden. So let me use the pen tool by pressing P on my keyboard and then creating a simple line like this. This is also gonna be three pixels or maybe even four. And it's gonna be, I'm just gonna change the color of this line to be visible against the eye icon. So I think it should be around here. So we will essentially need two lines. So the first line is gonna be the one that will determine where the icon is transparent and the second one will be actually visible. So let's just turn this to red. So this, so this line is not gonna be visible. This red area will just hide the area of the eye beneath the red line, right? Um, if that doesn't make sense, just Give me a few minutes and I will show you what I mean. Next thing, we're gonna select the eye, just the eye, and turn that into a frame, which means 
actually going over here and switching from group to frame. Then I'm gonna select both of these, press command X, select the I frame and then press command V. This will place these lines inside the I frame. I wanna also position them in a way that feels right, which is about here. And then also uncheck clip content, which will enable us to see objects that are you know, that kind of go over the edges of the frame. I'm gonna also select these two elements within the iframe, group them, and then just um, select the rectangle tool to create a rectangle that's as big as the iframe. So that's 40 by 22, so 40 by 22. Then I'm gonna move that behind the I group so that we get this, right? So it's in the background now. And then I'm gonna select vector one. I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna hide the first one just as a backup and move that almost to the very background, but just above the rectangle one object, right? So it's gonna be on top of the rectangle. And I'm gonna select these two and go here to subtract selection with both of these selected and press subtract selection. This is what we get right now. We get a new element called subtract that consists of the line here and then this rectangle. I'm gonna select the subtract object group and then group one and then click this icon over here to use as mask. And this is what I meant with the two lines. So as you can see, the area that we had as the red line is now being kind of hidden thanks to this setup. And also if we take this line and make it black, it's gonna be gonna kind of fit the whole icon, right? We're also gonna make these corners around it. Now I'm gonna actually move this outside of the eye icon frame so we get just this. I'm gonna turn this to a component. Boom, we have a component and then create a variant. This variant too is gonna be called invisible and this one is gonna be called visible. Under subtract in the first, in the visible variant of the eye component, I'm gonna go over, over here to the subtract element. I'm gonna expand it like this and then I'm gonna select vector three element and I'm gonna press arrows, use my arrows to move this outside eye like this until the entirety of the eye is visible. So I'm just gonna use my arrows. I'm using my arrows until we get the line to this position where the subtraction is essentially just this shape, but uh, since it covers the whole area of the eye, you can now see the entire eye. I'm gonna also use my arrows on this vector two element, and I'm gonna also move that outside the eye about right here. And then I'm also gonna go over here to the layer and set the opacity of this to zero, right? So we get a visible, nicely visible eye with no obstructions in between. What I'm gonna do next is go to prototype and then select the first variant and connect that to the second variant like this, right? I'm gonna say on tab, change to property one, invisible, and it's gonna be smart animate. And the next thing I'm gonna do is select the second variant and connect that to the first variant. And it's gonna have the same properties. On click, change to property one, visible, also smart animate. Same as the first one. On click, change to, and smart animate. Then I'm gonna make this frame a bit larger about let's say 300 by oops 300 not thousands by 150 or 200 and then go over to assets and i'm gonna look for our eye icon i'm gonna click and drag it and drop it right here and then launch the prototype so this is what we get i'm just gonna make this a bit larger so fill screen when i click this icon we get an animated line coming from the top right and then when i click again it's gonna be you know, moved back again. So this means we can now toggle back and forth between a visible and invisible state. You can use this in your own prototypes to, for example, symbolize or show that there is a feature where you can hide or show any object, for example, as an alternative to something like this, right? 
Figma has something like this right here. So this is an animated alternative for something similar right, like this. I think we could make the interaction a bit faster. So let's, let me just go to prototype, select these two variants, and then under interactions, I'm gonna set this to 160 so that it's a bit faster. Yeah, I think this is better. Again, I'm just gonna make this bigger so we can see the final result. This is the final result. And as I said, if you would like to use this in your own prototype, make sure to check the link in the description. That will take you to my store. Thanks for tuning in. Leave a like if this video helped you and I will see you in the next one.